What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here. I'm back here for the five takeaways um, against Brighton. Obviously, we lost 1 0 in a complete shit show at the Amex yesterday. Uh, but, Sim, I'm looking for some positivity. Can you give me anything? Not sure I can give you positivity, but I can give you maybe reasons why we lost, or maybe I can try and see certain patterns in games of the games that were dropping points and the games that we're losing. Um, so, let's see what we can learn from this defeat. All right, so let's get into it. And the first takeaway from the 1-0 loss at the Amex yesterday is empty threats. And this is quite a worrying trend. Um, the more touches we have in the attacking third, the less threatening we are, which is, a, which is a worry. And it also goes against what people would say in terms of, um, you know, we need to be more attacking, we need to be more on the front foot, we need to be get the ball in the attacking third more. Yeah. But the more we do that, the less we look, we're less attacking we are. The, the top, the... The top six games we've had with the most touches in the final third, um, we haven't won. We've only won one of those games, and that was against Burnley in a one-nil win. The other Just games, about. the other games, Newcastle at home, one-one, which we probably should have won. Uh, Brighton, we lost one-nil. Palace one-all. Everton, we lost one-nil, and Leicester, we lost two-nil. So we do tend to struggle. And you would say that those were our three worst forms of the season: Leicester, Everton, and now. Uh, yesterday at the Amex. So we struggle the more we have possession. So whether that's Jose's fault or whose fault that is, it's just a tr worrying trend. It is a worrying trend. And after the game yesterday, not sure if I said it to you, but I said it to someone, I really feel that our best option now um, for results moving forward is that Jose pragmatic approach because that in that period, that's when we weren't conceding goals and getting over the line just about. So I think that might be the way. I know fans are not going to like it. We're not going to like it. But I think in terms of getting results, that might be our best way of going about things from here on in for the rest of the season. Yeah, we seem to really struggle when we have possession, don't we? But it leads on to our next point. All right, and let's get on to number two. And the second takeaway is keep opposition out the box. Yeah, so what was also being a trend is of our five defeats, it's um it's been the highest amount of times that opposition players have been allowed to carry the ball inside the box. How that's all that they're all included in our in our to, in the top eight times we've allowed teams to carry the ball in the box. We've lost all five of those games. Um, so um, we've lost we've lost five, one, two, and drawn one of the top eight times we've let, allowed uh, teams to carry the ball inside the box. So we really need to start clogging up those central areas again. We need to keep players out of the box and keep um, stop them from allowing them to dribble in the box. And that also, I think, leads into the point of um, when we have possession, we're more open at the back. And we're, especially when we have fullbacks, um, especially last night, like Doherty and Davis, we're allowing way too much oh, space. Sissoko for them. and Davis. And sorry, Sissoko and Davis, apologies. We're allowing way too much space on the on the fullback areas, and and that's in turn allowing too much space in the centre, which is allowing players more time in the ball to carry the ball in the box. We're all one-on-one situations, and it's leading to chances. And that showed. Look at the look at the uh, goal they scored. He was allowed to carry that ball inside the yeah. box, around the box, and they scored. And it's a big problem for us. I mean, yeah, it's a big problem. I think that brings us back on our my point before. Is I, I really feel again, I'm going to reiterate it. I really feel that this pragmatic approach is the only way we're going to be getting results with this side especially with this defense I mean we really need the whole team defending as one back again and also it shows how effective it is when we can stop players um, traveling into the box because of the of the nine games of the least that we've uh, we've allowed players the least amount of touches in the box or carries into the box we've won six and drawn three mm -hmm. so we are a lot we're a lot better when we're clogging up central areas make it difficult for uh, opposition players to travel inside the box we really need to go back to control without possession uh, let's move on to the third takeaway, and this is the pressing problem. Yeah, so uh, obviously we were very effective in, in pressing under Pochettino. That was his main source of um, uh, of attack. But since of this season especially, the more we press, the worse it is for us. Um, the top eight games with the, with Tottenham with the, the most times we've pressed the opposition, we've lost four, won two and drawn two. So we'd really struggle. The more we press the opposition, the more we struggle. Of the of the eight times that we've the least pressing, we've won five, drawn two, and lost one. So the less we press, the more effective our game plan is. 
I felt that yesterday, in terms of the pressing game, I think our pressing game was absolutely awful yesterday. Uh, I mean, we attempted to press, but it was half assed attempt. So is it because our, our, our pressing is, is l not aggressive, which is either down that's, to the players exactly, or Jose? That's exactly or what it is. It's not down to Jose, it's down do we, to the players. Yeah, but do we not have the right, the players to be as aggressive in the press as we, as we, used, to be, as we used to have? Or is it a lack of desire from the players? Is that they're not playing for Jose? It's a, it's a big question to ask because we we seem to really struggle when we when we press teams. I mean, you saw it on the documentary time and time again. Ask him asking his players to press, to press, to be aggressive, to be aggressive. Never seemed to improve in in that sort of sense. You saw at the back end of Poch in the last year, last year and a half, uh, we failed. Yeah. We failed to press as as we were doing in the early days of Poch. So that that tells me it's a player problem. It's not a manager problem. Yeah. So so far. We're worse when we got the ball in the attacking third. We're a lot worse when we allow more dribbles into our box. And we're a lot worse when we press. It really I is. I mean, I'm, I'm lost for words sometimes with the way they conduct themselves everyone, on that yeah, pitch. Really I'm, I'm saying everyone blames Jose. Oh, the football's rubbish. The football's That's just this. easy. It's easy to point the finger at Jose. But clearly, from, from what I'm seeing, the more we attack and the more we want to be more offensive and dictate play, the worse the results are. Look, yeah, I know, I agree with that. But at the end of the day, Jose is not completely blameless of course in, not. in our run of form. But the players really do not help him. The players did not help Poch. And it seems to be kind of, you know, the same players doing the same things. So we've got to move on. Let's move on to Next the fourth up. takeaway from the game yesterday. And that is Tangai battles Bisuma. Yeah, it was a real midfield battle yesterday between those two, uh, toing and froing. Tongi completing, Tongi actually competed and won more duels than anyone on the pitch, um, but he had to because he had so much work to do, and he completed more dribbles than anyone. Five dribbles he completed, which is wow. quite impressive. Um, but Basuma um, had more recoveries and more interceptions than anyone on Basuma the pitch was as well. Yesterday, it was, and, and he had the highest pass completion around the pitch. So it was a real midfield battle before, between the two. But Ndombele was left very exposed, and he definitely needs more help in midfield especially when he's up against a three well the, yeah exactly the difference is Basuma had two men in there with him to help him out and Tongi only had Hoibie in there to help him out I mean yeah Hoibie sometimes can be uh, do enough work for two players but you can't rely on that every single game you know he's being overworked overrun so is Ndombele now so are some of the other players on that pitch so it's going to come increasingly hard especially when you're outnumbered in midfield against tiring legs like you saw on the pitch yesterday you really saw fatigue kick in um, at some stage yesterday and we need to stop overworking our players we've got this big squad for a reason yeah uh, we might have thought it was stronger in the summer than it that we think it is now but you still need to utilize your squad yeah all right um, which moves us on to the fifth and the final takeaway from the game yesterday and that is the Vinny impact yeah so obviously we're really struggling at half time weren't we um to right getting get any sort of impact um, on the uh Brighton defence but finally when Vinicius came on we had a target man we have we had a someone to aim for and he had more touches inside the box than any other Tottenham player throughout the whole game despite only playing 45 minutes and he had more shots than any other Tottenham player despite only playing 45 minutes but with only Davis and Sissoko providing quality quality from wide areas it was very hard for him to kind of get on the end of crosses and get on the end of things we, de we just need a lot more quality from wide areas if we're going to have uh, Vinicius up front which is a worry yeah, I mean, I think we we both said it that before the game, Vinicius, we need a, we need a striker up top. This is the reason why we bought a striker is to kind of play understudy to Harry Kane when he gets injured, uh, bring out another option coming off the bench like we used the Fernando Lorente to perfection. I mm -hmm. thought that's the way we were going to use Carlos Vinicius. Um, I thought it might have been a kick in the teeth to him if he didn't start the game against Brighton. Um, he didn't start the game against Brighton. We looked completely toothless in that first half. He came on second half. It did improve slightly, but didn't improve as much as we wanted it to improve. Uh, let's be honest, but it did provide us with a bit of a focal point up there, a bit of a presence up there. Um, so, yeah, I think it's clear for everyone to see that he needs to start against Chelsea. Yeah, he, there was definitely an improvement and although he wasn't perfect, he was definitely offered more than we offered in the first half. Exactly. All right. So that is our five takeaways from the shocking 1-0 defeat at Brighton yesterday. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other takeaways regarding the 1-0 loss at Brighton yesterday. Let me know if you agree with our takeaways as well. Uh, we spoke about number one takeaway was the empty threats. Number two was keeping opposition out of the box. Number three was our pressing problem. Number four was Bissouma 
or Tangai battling the Suma, and number five was that Venetius impact. So let me know your thoughts on all of those uh, in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.